Welcome to the Lean Blog Podcast. Visit our website at www.leanblog.org. Now, here's your host, Mark Graben. I want to thank uh, our guest, Dr. Sammy Bari, who's joining us from Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks for talking to us again on the Lean Blog Podcast. Thank you for inviting me, Mark. Uh, it's really good to talk to you again, and I want you to um, share with the viewers and listeners what you've been doing as part of your lean education, um, going out and visiting manufacturing companies, what you're seeing and learning in that process. I'm, I'm learning a lot of things, but, but I'm also seeing that they are, they are doing some of the mistakes I was doing earlier in my journey. Uh, one of the most important things is really focusing on eliminating waste in their own systems, utilizing lean tools in a batch and queue system, which I, have, I had done for something like 13 years without really having any good results. So from that and from my journey, I learned that once you do your lean transformation, that's when you see most of your results. Then if you wanted to use lean tools for Kaizen and continuous improvement after you have changed from batch and queue to flow production, that is really when you start seeing good results from the lean tools. I, I think a lot of the a lot of frustrations are happening today in people trying to implement lean come from that, from utilizing lean tools in uh, out of context in, for instance, batch and queue systems. Can you share some examples of the tools that you see people implementing that aren't having the impact that they might want? Um, tools like? Uh, well, I, I'd rather give you our examples. Uh, for instance, when I learned about waste and we learned that any activity that is not adding value is waste, then I came back and shared that view with my on my staff. And we started looking around ourselves, around in the office, what can we eliminate? And we started eliminating things and improving, let's say, how we file. We were doing paper files at that time. Uh, how we file your insurance EOBs and uh, who is filling out the forms, who is not filling out the forms, eliminating that kind of waste. Uh, then we, we even improved our setups. We improved them dramatically without seeing any results. Why? We weren't focused on one piece flow. You know, if you think about it, uh, you take any uh, any lean principle, any lean concept. Let's say respect for people, and we all like that, right? Respect for people. Can you show respect for people in a batch and queue environment? I think you can. Uh, you you take any other lean concept and you ask yourself, can I apply this in a batch and queue environment? And I found that I would say all of them except one piece flow can be applied in any kind of environment. Now, when you start one piece flow, that has to be lean. It cannot be batch and one piece flow. So what I found most best results we got, the best results we got was really when we pursued one piece flow or in our case, one patient flow, right? One patient flow. So we segmented our value streams according to how many providers are going to see the patient. For instance, if, uh, if you're going to see only the hygienist, you can flow through the system very easily. If you want to see the hygienist and the dentist, it becomes a little bit more complicated. If you want to see the hygienist, the dentist, and we find that you need to go see a specialist, then it's even more complicated. You can even go to where, to where you need to see the hygienist, the dentist, the lab, you need to have a lab case, and then you need to see a special. All of these are different value streams. So we pursue one piece flow. It's not gonna happen in every case. It will probably never happen in every case. But in the simple cases, like you're going to see the hygienist, we try to get you in on time, get you out on time, and not waste your time in the chair at all. From that, we learn something. We learn how to flow a patient easily. Then we go to a, a more complex case where you need to see the hygienist, and she found a little cavity, and now the dentist needs to come. So we flow that through the system very easily, and from it, we learn how to flow more complex cases, and we keep adding 
more and more cases to the flow of patient. That's what we found to be most efficient in implementing lean and in really uh, doing Kaizen or continuous improvement activities later. And you talk about this in your book, Follow the Learner, but can you tell viewers who might not have heard this before, when you talk about single piece flow, single patient flow, um, what changes you made to the process to allow that to happen, and, and what was the positive impact uh, for the patients and for your practice? Uh, what, the changes we've done are exactly the same changes as that you would do in a manufacturing setting. See, uh, when I studied Shingo and Ono, they say that the, the obstacle to one piece flow, the main obstacle, is setups. You need to make your setups go fast, and that's when they called Chingo, and he reduced their setups from 12 hours to less than 10 minutes. He called it single minute exchange of dyes. So we learned that, and we reduced our setups to where changing from one procedure to the other did not require making another appointment. And we realized that our main enemy is appointments. If used, if you treat the mouth in many appointments, then you are losing and the patient is losing. So we changed our setups around the patient and around the work area to where we could move from one kind of treatment like a filling to a root canal, let's say, without changing setups at all. Then we worked on turning the room over from one patient to the other. So now in, within a few minutes, we can receive a patient in the room. And I think mainly it's working with people, our assistants, our hygienists, inside their heart, inside their mind, they're ready. Whenever they find a cavity on a patient, they're ready to start right away. The impact was that uh, we used to take like seven, seven visits on an average to finish a mouth, to bring it back to health. Now it takes us uh, on average a visit and a half. It used to take something like 270 days to finish a mouth. If you count all the spaces between the appointments, all the weights between the appointments, now it takes something like 10 days. So the impact on, on the patients is, is tremendous because now they know that they can fit their appointments in their schedule, in their daily schedule. If you're leaving work, let's say for an hour, and you know you're gonna spend half an hour at the dentist, now it's predictable you know that you can go and come back to work. Uh, on the practice, it's, it's been very good because now we're much more organized. Uh, work is much more relaxing than before. And patients don't wait. We, we used to have like a two hour wait in, in our waiting room. Now it's really either zero seconds or maybe a few minutes, you know? It's much more relaxing, much more respectful for the patient, the patient's time and also more respectful to the employee's time. Uh, the hygienist is not waiting for me anymore like she used to, to come and check on her patients. The assistant doesn't wait, wait for me. So it is more respectful for everybody's time. Okay, and so what I hear you saying, and I, I think your general advice for the viewers might be, regardless if you're in a manufacturing company or a dental office or in a hospital, rather than just going implementing lean tools like 5S or even some of the lean management principles like respect for people, really what you need to focus on first is improving flow and then that helps enable um, the right environment for the rest of those practices to work. Absolutely. First, we need to change to flow production or flow treatment for the patient. That's number one. Second, I think we need to eliminate departments. Departments, in our case, we have a, de a hygiene department usually, a dentist department, a front desk department. All of these need to be eliminated. Just focus on the patient. Put everybody around the patient so the flow could go smoothly. So there is a, there is a definite se optimal sequence, which is flow first, Kaizen later. Well, that sounds like great advice. So I want to thank you again, Dr. Sammy Bari from Jacksonville, Florida. Hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thank you, Mark.